Hello everybody, Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelorette Recap, a guy's review. This video is about Colton Underwood and Cassie Randolph and uh, the issues that went down in their relationship as it ended uh, involving Colton Underwood stalking, harassing, and planting a tracking device on her car. He's all but admitted to this and yet nothing has come of it. She filed a uh, police report as reported by TMZ, the title here, Bachelor Colton Underwood allegedly placed tracking device on Cassie's car, also claims harassing texts. We've read the screen grabs to all these texts. Uh, literally, uh, millions of people have seen the screen grabs, the text messages, the harassment. Uh, we have the... Uh, you know, uh, temporary restraining order police uh, uh, filed in the uh, court case that was going to be for the permanent restraining order. Of course, it was settled just before that happened. Nobody really knows exactly what went down with that. But we do know that Colton Underwood has pretty much gone on with his life uh, without any recourse. And I think it's important to use your platform. Colton Underwood, you know, he, he, said, he says he's a Christian man. I believe him. I think it's important to use your platform in a way that will help others do good. With millions of followers, he has the chance to talk about his sins. He has the chance to talk about what got him to a such a dark place where he would go online and buy a tracking device and you know, hook it to some duct tape and stick it underneath their car. Let's talk about that, Colton. Let's have an hour-long podcast. I'm not asking to be a part of it. I just, as a um, audience member of Bachelor Nation, think you owe it to the following that built you to have these conversations. We politely waited. We said, oh, it won't happen right away. He'll go on with his life. But if you're going to go on with your life, you know, doing home renovations, you know, sponsored on different Instagram, you know, doing the influencer thing, if you're going to sell dog merchandise as a for-profit company and give a portion of the proceeds to uh, old, uh, you know, Fido over there, at what point are you going to man up and be the Christian man that you are and do good with your name, speak about it, talk to people. You're not the only person that has stalked someone before. So what is it in your DNA that got you to that place of despair? Now, of course, Cassie Randolph is the victim. We know that. That's clear. What we don't know is what was going through your head. And bro, you're not alone. So I say this as as, as, as how I would talk to a friend. You need to get out there. You need to have this conversation. I don't know what sort of PR companies are telling you. Hang low. Delete your, deactivate your Instagram, turn off your comments. You got your head in the sand, bro. This is going to follow you for the rest of your life in the same way you followed Cassie Randolph into dark alleys and digitally by placing a tracking device on her car, which is illegal according to a penal code that could serve up to one year in prison. You are so lucky she decided to settle out of court because if we did get this on the record, it wouldn't have looked pretty for you. But I challenge you. Here's a photo of you. Um, a photo of the uh, tracking device that was found. Uh, this is Cassie's brother who found the tracking device. Brother of the Year Award. So I challenge you, Colton Underwood, to speak about it. Talk about what went down. Why did you feel the way you did? You're not the victim here, Colton Underwood, but you're you're responsible for giving an explanation. And I know legally you don't have to do it. As we saw here, I made this video a couple weeks ago. Uh, Cassie Randolph's lawyer, Brian Friedman, a uh, power attorney, Brian Friedman, also represents Chris Harrison. Chris Harrison's worth a lot of money. He hired the best lawyer he could. Cassie Randolph hired the best lawyer she could. So let me tell you this right now. She didn't drop the charges because she wasn't getting something out of it. A hefty settlement probably went down and we'll never know about it. And I don't blame Cassie for taking that settlement, whatever it may be, whatever contingency that he'll stay away from her. Sure, it's not a restraining order, but clearly the message was received. He moved far, far away. Um, there are still sources that claimed that, um, you know, that tried to angle it uh, in, in, in the idea that Cassie was trying to get something out of Colton when they broke up. She was trying to sell this documentary they were making together. And I wanted to read for you what Cassie's sister said as she came to uh, Cassie's defense. And it's really sad that this has become like a family issue, but that's exactly what it is. The family took in Colton Underwood when he was sick with COVID-19 in the early stages one year ago. They took him in. 
And even after Cassie was breaking up with him, they, they let him, you know, quarantine on the top floor of their place and, and all that. They finally kicked him out when they could. And, uh, and things just went sour from there. there. This is from Cassie's sister, Michelle. This is such an obvious attempt to smear Cassie's name to deflect from the seriousness of what was contained in the restraining order. And for the record, I nor my parents have filmed or signed any contracts. My parents haven't even spoken once to anyone involved in the potential show. The claim of him dropping out are false. He, his source, and everyone involved knows this is a lie. Now, this is in regards to the idea. Um, uh, let me find the, uh, the actual... Um, um, smear that is is being spoken about here um Cassie has spoken before about how her breakup was made more difficult by people harassing her about it online. She took a long break from social media after the breakup hit the news and was unhappy with her interview edit on The Bachelor, greatest seasons ever. Cassie seemed to be distancing herself from The Bachelor and especially from Colton, so claims of a reality show seem strange. Neither Colton or Cassie have made an official statement about the show yet, so we'll have to see what they have to say. You know, maybe they did have, like, cameras rolling or whatever. When Colton... Um, when Colt, uh, uh, th so this is from the source. Uh, this is from the source that people are saying was uh, someone from Colton's camp. Cassie is still trying to sell her show. Her family is also in on it, the source is quoted saying. When Colton and Cassie broke up, she tried to keep it just friends, but his feelings never went away for her. She did like the attention, so it was very hard for him. Michelle refutes all these claims, clearly stating that Cassie's family has no knowledge of this show. She also labeled a quote about Cassie liking the attention as false in her Instagram story. As has been proven over the last six months or so, Cassie wants nothing to do with Colton or this story moving forward. She's completing her uh, her uh, education, buying a home. She's moving on with her life. So she has proven that she truly did want nothing uh, to do with this online. But, you know, sometimes when somebody, you know, like is a nice person, like Cassie seems to be a nice person. You know, maybe she went on the show thinking she was going to find love, and maybe she just wasn't that into Colton. You know, that seems to be the case, that she just didn't like him that much. But she went on the show regardless. She was liked. And then afterwards, after they broke up, all the Colton fans, um, you know, came to his defense saying she led him on. Well, it's... It's her choice and right with her human body to decide what she wants to do with it moving forward. If she's just not that into someone and wants to quit a show, so be it. He pursues her. Maybe there's guilt. Maybe there are good times, but obviously there were bad times as well. She finally decides to leave. Well, after the show ended, um, obviously there was these the restraining order and, and whatnot. And uh, after the restraining order was dismissed, we never once heard from Cassie again. All we heard was from Colton, and this is his statement, as soon as the restraining order was dismissed, which my hypothesis is that there was a large settlement and they went on their way. Colton said, Today, Cassie asked the court to dismiss the temporary restraining order against me, the 28-year-old former bachelor told Us Weekly in a statement. The two of us were able to reach a private agreement to address any of Cassie's concerns. I do not believe Cassie did anything wrong in filing for the restraining orders and also believe she acted in good faith. I appreciate everyone's respect for privacy regarding this matter. So my question with the settlement is, did the settlement involve him getting the last word? Or did she just take the high road and decide no matter what she says, it's just going to lead to him rebuting it? Is that a word, rebuting it? Either way, you know, it really makes you wonder, it, was he taking advantage of her good nature that she just didn't want drama? So then people posted and have been posted on Reddit saying, are we just going to be okay with Colton Underwood? And that seems to be the question. Are we just going to let the world go back to normal? People says, uh, someone posted, Colton Underwood is selling dog hoodies to benefit dog rescue. Yeah, that's great. So he's got this dog hoodie company, right? And it's like, look, you can't hate someone who's uh, supporting dogs, right? You know, that's the thought. But boy, could he do something like less, like <laughs> less harmless? When you think about uh, whatever his PR people are saying, you need to get back out there. You need to do something. You know, was like walking old people across the street taken. You know, what else could he have done to repair his image? But a dog company, you can't help but be likable with this. So, um, you know, of course, when you look at the, um, you know, the proceeds, the company reads like a, you know, like a Wix account that someone created on their first day ever using the internet. We're dedicated to supporting organizations that better the lives of dogs and all creatures in need. A portion of sales go directly to animal rescue efforts that, uh, and shelters across the nation. Of course, this is a for-profit company, so we don't know exactly how much is being donated or what the deal is with that. Obviously, Colton, um, 
is a uh, he he was never charged with anything. He deserve he he's not a felon. He doesn't have a court record as far as we know, other than the uh, uh, temporary restraining order. But having it not been a permanent restraining order, we just don't know. We don't know what's going on with his livelihood or anything like that. But what we do know is, without addressing the elephant in the room, we're just not moving forward in life. Um, here's what's interesting. I mean, the, the guy's got sales. This was uh, in response to Peter's season. Someone asked if you watched. He said, interesting question. Since I was silenced this season and opted to not watch it, I can't go into detail. What I can say is I feel like it was way overproduced and both parties could have done a much better job, Peter and production. Peter could have stood up for himself and put his foot down when the TV show part of things started to control his relationship. Production could have helped guide him better. I spoke about how at some points you have to use your gut and trust them in my book with examples. I do feel very sorry for Pete. So he turns a question about Peter into selling his book. And also, he says, since I was silenced this season and opted to not watch it, I can't go into detail. Of course, this was about Peter Weber. But let me talk to you directly, Colton Underwood. You are no longer silenced. You are off contract. You are able to talk about anything in your free will. As a Christian man, I challenge you to talk about the restraining order, to talk about how you uh, sent harassing text messages from an unknown number and created a sense of fear in the person you loved. I challenge you to talk about all of these things in a long-form podcast, a straight-to-video interview, in some form or another that shows other people who also suffer from whatever addictions you suffer from that they can seek help, that they don't need to torment an innocent person. I ask this of you, Colton. I think it's what you need to do moving forward, and I would gladly buy one of your dog hoodies if you would make this happen. This is what Cassie posted before the restraining orders took place. You can see the torment in her kind of soul that she felt like she needed to go public when this is so against everything she's ever done, but she just couldn't let it fly anymore. So this is what Cassie posted. I would like to first start a uh, state that I do not wish to create an online petty war. Colton, as you know, we made an agreement to not publicly discuss our breakup. I've honored this as you have thus far. As some of you know, I did a GOAT interview this week, greatest of all time interview this week. I purposely remain private and vague out of respect for Colton in our relationship. If you're wondering why I did a Bachelor GOAT interview, it's because I respect the fact that Bachelor brought me the platform that I have. I don't want to make enemies with or turn my back on the franchise. I have no regrets gained a great boy, boyfriend in a healthy one and a half year relationship. Incredible and unique opportunities and a platform that I intend to use for good. I want to show appreciation. I didn't, sh I didn't see any harm in doing the interview as I wasn't going to dish out direct about our relationship to them. Colton, your last Instagram post saddened me, but also left me frustrated. It seems you are subtly engaging in a tactic that peppers in passive aggressive comments such as that obviously changed this week in order to make me look like the bad one. I would like to place on public record and ask you politely to refrain from discussing our relationship as we agreed. I would also like to ask that you don't cloud our great one and a half year relationship with a messy breakup. We both know that we had a great relationship and there are not many de details to discuss. So this is Cassie in desperation sending a warning flare to say, hold on, bro. Let's not do this. You don't want me to start showing these receipts. On Monday evening, you inform me you intend to monetize our breakup by writing a new chapter to discuss your experience with COVID and about our breakup. You've also refused to give me any sort of approval on the chapter that you'll be writing, which will heavily feature me. A little insight as to why I was so frustrated on my stories that evening. This seems a bit unfair to me. Colton, you can do what you want, but please do not have a double standard. I ask you again on public record to refrain from prolonging our breakup or dragging me when we both know it's unwarranted. Neither of us or anyone close to us would have ever predicted that I would have to write this post. Again, I can't control your actions, but I sincerely hope we can both move forward in peace. Thank you in advance. I would prefer this to now be the end of this. I wish you nothing but the best and hope you can move on peacefully and successfully. Of course, tragically, this wasn't the end of the conversation. As I made this video, uh, which received over a quarter million views and in dozens, I mean, millions and millions of watch minutes, people, uh, this was just insane because all I did, the, the big shocking thing I did was read text messages that he sent to her. Um, this text message on the left was from a fake number he created. This was from somebody that he pretended to be and he tr pretended to stalk himself and Cassie in some twisted way to bond them back together. He said, the whole town knows all you ever wanted was to be famous. Congrats, you got it, but at what cost? Super fake. 
And then a, a text that she sent to Colton when she knew it was Colton. I feel like you aren't understanding how much I don't want drama. And I think he used the fact that she didn't want drama so much that he was able to get the last word in. So here we are. We're selling dog t-shirts, folks. It's 2021. We have yet to hear anything from Colton Underwood. And again, he doesn't have to say anything, but I'll tell you this, you know, the fact that he's kind of, you know, he's doing home renovations with his, using his platform, uh, you know, as an influencer tool. I totally support that in Bachelor Nation. Use the following you have to monetize. That is equity you have built, but you've built this equity off the backs of Bachelor Nation, which let me tell you from my YouTube uh, demographics is about 90% women. 90% women watch my channel. So I suppose 90% of your Bachelor following might be women. And let me tell you something, the most dangerous man in a woman's life is not a stranger lurking in the alley. It's a man that she knows. It's somebody that can't take no for an answer. It's somebody with addiction, whether it be alcoholic, some sort of emotional manipulative, you know, man manipulation. Colton, you're six foot five. You were, you know, briefly in the NFL. You're a big man. You may see yourself as the four-year-old kind spirited kid who loves dogs. And I wish we could see you that way too. But a lot of people see you with a hoodie on, overshadowing your face, lurking in a dark alleyway. If Cassie was lying about this, you would think you would come to your own defense. But like you've said in your statement, Cassie did nothing wrong. Her family was strong enough to help her, to guide her out of this mess, to get a top power attorney, Brian Friedman. Her family was, uh, her brother was smart enough to check her car for tracking devices and to really protect her. She's going to live with this for a long time. Uh, God knows uh, post-traumatic stress disorder doesn't go away. My father suffered from that, uh, from the Vietnam War until the day he passed away. Uh, you've done something to her. You've changed her course in life in one way or another for better or for worse. And in a lot of ways for worse, you owe it to her and to everyone who's been a victim of some form of, of manipulation, of some form of stalking, of some form of abuse, which is unfortunately more people than you believe. And you owe it to them to speak out about this. And you owe it to them to share your story about how you got from fun-loving lead of The Bachelor to uh, defending yourself against these charges and settling out of court because you would have been found guilty. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section. I'm going to make a video about this. Leave a voicemail, 401-213-9828. And let's hear what you have to say. What, what should happen moving forward? If there's going to be no recourse in the court or law, if, um, if it's just going to be one of those things where, you know, uh, where we're just, uh, he's just going to sell t-shirts and never address it. I mean, you're a young guy, Colton, you got a long life to live. Do you really want to be addressing this for the rest of your life and saying no comment? Get out in front of it. Tell your side of the story. All right, folks, let me know what y'all think. Leave that voicemail and we'll see you later on for more content. Bye now.